We're going to go over the different parts of the actual device of the tracheostomy. First, we're going to start with what you see when you look at the patient because the whole tracheostomy won't be visible to you. You'll only be able to see the, like the name plate, the end plate here, and whether or not there's a pilot balloon. So when you walk into a room, that's the portion that you'll be able to see. The plate itself has important information on it, such as what type of tracheostomy it is, like this here says Shiley. It also tells you the size of the tracheostomy. This is a six, and then it says FEN, so fenestrated, meaning there's a hole in the back of the tracheostomy. So you can gain a lot of information and knowledge about the tracheostomy by looking at the plate. This is also what attaches to the neckties. So these neckties um, go through the holes on either side of the plate and are how you attach the tracheostomy to the patient's neck. The pilot balloon itself is uh, also important to recognize because if there's a pilot balloon, you know that there's a cuff on the trach and that the trach itself can be used in an emergent situation as an airway and that you will be able to completely control the airflow by inflating the cuff versus a tracheostomy that does not have a cuff. There's no pilot balloon, as you can see. So you know that this cannot be used in an emergent situation as an emergent airway. Now we're gonna go over how to tell if the cuff is inflated versus deflated. You're gonna be able to tell that by simply looking at the pilot balloon. Here the pilot balloon is deflated, so is the cuff. I'll show you what it looks like when it's inflated. So the cuff is now inflated and so is the pilot balloon. You won't be able to see the cuff because that's going to be in the patient in the airway, but you'll be able to see the pilot balloon and know that it's inflated. Now we're gonna talk about the outer cannula and the differences between the outer cannulas and why those differences are important to understand and know. This part of the device is called the outer cannula and is what fits into the airway. It can either be fenestrated, meaning there's a hole in the back, or it can be unfenestrated, like this tracheostomy here. You can see there's no hole in the back. And that's important to know because air flows through the fenestration when there's a hole, and obviously air doesn't flow through if there's no hole, meaning that with this tracheostomy, air can only go in and out, and it won't go up past the vocal cords and through the patient's mouth when they exhale if there's no fenestration. The outer cannula does not connect to the ambu bag. We'll go over more later why that's important. But the inner cannula, which we'll go over now, is the portion that connects to the ambu bag. The inner cannula um, is removable. There's different mechanisms for removing the inner cannula, and it's important to become familiar with the different ways. But the most common are this pull tab um, option, like this. And sometimes it can be a little tricky. Um, but it's important to understand how to remove the inner cannula because sometimes it can uh, become occluded with secretions and you need to be able to remove it to either replace it with a new one or you can clean the inner cannula. But this allows, um, this makes it so that you don't always have to replace the entire device. You can just replace the inner cannula itself. So I'll show you a different type of inner cannula mechanism for connecting with the tracheostomy. This one twists and clicks in and then to take it out, you twist and remove it as well. And you can feel when you put it in that it clicks in so you know that it's secure. Just like outer cannulas, inner cannulas can be fenestrated versus not fenestrated. So for example, in this trach, if I put this inner cannula in and it doesn't have a fenestration, then I'm still completely controlling the airflow through the airway and none of it is escaping through the back of the fenestration of the trach because there's no fenestration in the inner cannula. Versus 
This inner cannula, you can see it's different. It's green, so the different colored cap is how you know that it's different from the original um, inner cannula, and it has a fenestration on the back. So it clicks in the same way. But now that fenestration is open, which allows for air if the cuff is unflated, deflated. Allows for air to travel up through the trach, around the trach, to the patient's vocal cords and out their mouth. Now we're gonna talk about the obturator and why it's important to know what it is and in what situations it's used. This is the obturator. It goes into the tracheostomy instead of the inner cannula. So it will not fit into the trach if you have an inner cannula in the trach. You can see that it has a rounded edge and it's rigid in shape. You're gonna use the obturator in situations where you're having to put a new tracheostomy into a patient. It provides a rigid shape, so it allows you to maintain the shape of the tracheostomy as you put it into a patient. And it also has the rounded edge. So as you're putting the new tracheostomy into the patient, you're protecting the airway from damage from the sharp edge of the tracheostomy itself. Because as you can see, without the obturator, there's a sharp edge here. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the different types of caps and how they help you control airflow in and out of the tracheostomy and allow for patients to start talking on their own again and using their vocal cords and gaining their cough reflex. So I'm gonna put the inner cannula back into this tracheostomy and it clicks in there, you could hear it. This is a passimir valve. It's a clear valve, it's a one-way valve. So it allows, it attaches to the inner cannula here and it allows for air to go into the tracheostomy but not out. So you actually wouldn't want to use this on a trach that doesn't have a fenestration. You're only going to use it on a tracheostomy that does have a fenestration. See, and I'm putting the inner cannula with a fenestration in. Clicking it in. And then attaching the passimir valve. So it's allowing for air to go into the tracheostomy, but it won't allow air back out. That means that as the patient exhales and air goes this way, around the trach that is with a cuff that's deflated um, and the air will, all of it will be forced to go through the fenestration and past the patient's vocal cords so that they can talk. Um, and it doesn't allow any of the air to escape back out of the tracheostomy. Once they've been able to tolerate having a passimir valve on for an extended period of time without desaturating, you know that they're ready to advance to the next level of potentially breathing on their own completely, which means that you're going to cap the tracheostomy itself. So instead of, and so this is a different type of inner cannula, but it doesn't allow any air in or out of the tracheostomy. So if this is, this actually goes with this trach. Um, so if you see this, you know that there's no air going in or out of the tracheostomy and the patient is breathing completely on their own because this is just a cap. And those are the different parts and types of tracheostomies.